Well, welcome to our another lesson whereby we shall be discussing about growth and development of skull. Remember from our previous uh, discussion, we were able to talk much about the introduction part, the bones of the skull or those bones that makes up the skull. And we were able to identify the 22 bones, including those of the cranium, which were eight in number and those of the facial, which were 14 in number. We also did uh, mention about uh, other bones, as for example, those of the ear ossicles, which are three in pairs. And also we went through to identify the bone, which is found uh, the anterior aspect of the neck, which is the hyoid bone. So without much, uh, let's move ahead and check about the growth and development of skull. Remember, uh, during my introduction part to bones, I did mention about the flat bones of the skull, which are uh, which develop from intramembranous ossification, right? Okay, uh, with us today, let me just uh, read what I've posted to you. At birth, the skull contains interval of dense connective tissue, which are cartilage membranes between plates of bones, also known as uh, the fontanelles, uh, that eventually hardened to bone. Remember, during the early development of bone, from these cartilage uh, membranes, the bones will develop gradually to a hard tissue. Then th there are spaces which are left between one individual bone to the other, and these spaces are known as the fontanelle. I'll show you right away as we will be proceeding with our work. So in the adult, uh, the skull bones contact along joints with interlocking zipper-like articulation known as sutures, many of which derive their names from the bone that contact across them. So like any other bone, uh, remember while we were dealing with the appendicular skeleton, we, uh, we were able to identify the bone contacting with the other or long bone uh, articulating with another bone. And that articulation between them was known as the joint. And most of the joints which are raised uh, or which arises from the long bone, uh, most of them are synovial joint. But for this case of the skull, it's known as uh, the sutures, which are not uh, movable at all. Uh, nonetheless, at an early uh, life or early development of the skull, it, it's slight movable, but well, the skull matures, these joints are not movable. And under classification of uh, joints, these joints are known as the arthrosis joint, which are totally not movable at all. So let's proceed and consider these fontanelles and the sutures of the skull. For the fontanelles, fontanelles, fontanelles are the areas where an ossified mesenchyme develop into the dense connective tissue of the skull. As bone formation continues after birth, the fontanelles are eventually rep replaced with bone by intramembranous ossification, as mentioned earlier. And the thin collagenous connective tissue junction that remains between neighboring bones become the sutures uh, that I've explained to you the joints between uh, one bone and the other in between the skull. Functionally, the fontanelles serve as the spacers for the growth of neighboring skull bones and also provide some flexibility to the fetal skull. Remember at an early life of the fetus, the bone keeps on growing and needs enough space to develop to a mature skeleton or skull. So for this case, we have the fontanelles at the skull bones whereby it provides a space for the neighboring bone to grow. And as well, it provides some flexibility for the fetus uh, skull. So why does this uh, has to do so? Because uh, during birth, uh, remember that birth canal of the female or uh, of a woman, it's uh, so small. So that fontanelle, its flexibility to allow the fetus to pass through that uh, space, which is the vaginal uh, canal. So, and also as well, we have these fontanelles allows the brain of the infancy to continue to grow and uh, reach its maximum level where it can function at its op optimum uh, level. Fine, let's proceed and check this fontanelle. So the skull, this is a skull of a newborn or a, yeah, uh, this is the skull of a newborn. As you can see, we have the two parietal bones, then we have this uh, junction which is uh, marked as 12. 
So this is known as the sagittal suture, but we shall check or we shall review that later. So let's consider about the fontanelles first. Uh, the part labeled 14 is the anterior fontanelle of the skull. Then we have the part labeled 15 is the posterior fontanelle of the skull. As we shall be moving uh, on, we shall check other fontanelles, which are the sphenoidal or anterolateral fontanelle. And then we shall be checking also as well the mastoid posterolateral fontanelles. Those are mainly seen at the lateral aspect of the skull. So let's proceed and check other fontanelles. But we have a description here. Also, an infant may have many fontanelles at birth. The form and location of six are fairly constant. And that's why I've been able to highlight them with uh, the color, which is red. Those which are very uh, common or can easily be traced on a fetus skull. We have the anterior fontanelle, the posterior fontanelle, the sphenoid, sphenoidal, which is found on the anterior lateral aspect. Then we have the mastoid, or, which is mainly seen on the posterior lateral aspect of the fetal skull. So uh, these six, which are fairly constant, we have the unpaired anterior fontanelle. Uh, that's which we have been uh, looking at. The part labeled 14 is the anterior fontanelle. So the anterior fontanelle is located at the midline among the two parietal bones and the frontal bones. It's roughly diamond shaped and it's the largest fontanelle. It usually closes at 18 to 24 months after birth. So immediately after birth, from the beginning of the first month to the 18 or 24, this fontanelle gradually closes up. The unpaired posterior fontanelle is located at the midline among the two parietal bones and the occipital bone. Since it is much smaller than the anterior fontanelle, it's, uh, it generally closes about two months after birth. The posterior fontanelle can go back and check at that, which is uh, found at the part labeled 15. So we have the two parietal bones. This large are uh, the parietal bone of the skull. We have another parietal bone. Then uh, the posterior most aspect of the uh, skull of a newborn, we have uh, that bone known as the occipital bone. Uh, we have the, an, uh, the anterolateral fontanelle, which is located laterally among the frontal, parietal, and temporal, as well as the sphenoidal bones are small and irregular in shape, and normally they close about three months after birth. So the anterolateral, we shall check that as we uh, move ahead. The paired posterolateral fontanelles located laterally among the parietal, occipital, and temporal bones are irregular shaped. They begin to close one to two months after birth, but closure is generally not complete until 12 months uh, reaches. So let's just see the two anterolateral fontanelles and the posterolateral fontanelles. So we have that they are paired fontanelle. So other fontanelles or other sutures that are seen or are found on this skull we have as uh, which is uh, the part labeled nine we have that uh, mark or a kind of joint between two bones it's known as the, a nozzle bone but we'll uh, check or review about the nozzle bone then we'll find something which is as well joining those uh, bones of the nose so we have nozzle bone in sutures in fontanelles then we have anterior fontanelle at the part labeled 14. So those are the fontanelles which are mainly seen at the anterior aspect of the skull. Uh, the part labeled 10 is one of the most common joint of the skull, which is a, a suture and it's known as a frontal suture. Then we have the part labeled 11, that is coronal suture. So those are the main part which are in, uh, we are in more concerned of because we are dealing with them today. But for the rest of the part like uh, frontal tuber eminence, as the part labeled one, this is where the skull begins to grow. As for the case of this frontal bone, uh, uh, for the part named as frontal tuber is where the skull starts to grow. Uh, for other fontanelles, which I said I'll show you right away, we'd seen about the frontal uh, the frontal fontanelle, which is labeled by the part uh, 14. Uh, then we have the part labeled 16, is the anterolateral fontanelle, and we did mention they are paired, so which means 
is found on the left aspect of the skull and as well as the right uh, aspect of the fetal skull. Then we have the part labeled 17, and this is the part known as the posterior lateral fontanelle or the mastoid fontanelle. So uh, you've been able to add point to your knowledge that uh, within fetus skull, their fontanel 